Back on. <laughs> I just lost 20 minutes of time. I left my when I changed the battery the first time, not the not not the memory card. I didn't notice it when I changed the memory card that I'd left the stick propped up against a tree. And it was quite a while up along the it was a good ten minute walk back. And possibly a quarter of an hour getting back to where I was. So I probably lost a good 20 minutes of the walk. And I feel out of breath now. I was really calm. I was really enjoying it. And I realised my stick. What happened? I saw this tall bloke on his own. And I looked back. And I, I didn't know. I just reached for my stick. And... Uh, well, it wasn't there. Then I realised I must have dropped it or lost it. Or Then I thought, no, I changed a battery and I changed a memory card. It was right back when I first changed a memory card. Very annoying, folks. I had to do some speed walking. Which has given me, made me a bit breathless, actually. Oh, look at these lovely trees. Tall... It could be white beams, you know. Never really thought what these could be. There's a group of people following me. They're not following me, but they're not far. They're um, not far away. Oh yeah, lovely trees. Some people sat down for a bit. It's magical, this, isn't it? As kids, we often walked through that with our wellies on. Daisy and Amber did it when I brought them up here. That was a magical little time when they were children, small children. I introduced them to this place. I loved it. They loved it, and I loved watching them enjoying it as well. They've grown up so fast now. I can't believe it. How quick. I can remember when our kids were small. There was this old man, we were on holiday, and he was sat. Not being watching our kids in a horrible way, but he just said to us, Make the most of it, he said. Well, they're little. It's true. I think of my kids a lot when they're kids. When they were small children. You know, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. I think of them as well, grown up. Yeah, it's weird, isn't it? I often, if I dream about them, they're often um, small. They're often small. Small people. My little people that went over the bridge. <sighs> over and out, we'll take on. This is known as Hodder's Coombe, everyone. And a 
lots of streams here, lots of known as fords, lots of um, streams meet further up we'll, as we've got across in a minute. Look at that old tree. Looks like an old elm, doesn't it? Very gnarled. Is that so much character the trees have got? Oh, I've calmed down now. I mean, I didn't... There was no point me getting too upset by... I, I thought, shall I leave the stick? And I thought, no. It took me ten minutes to get back to where I'd left it, though. And as you know, I was just talking about how the walk can take... seems to go on when you're on the way back. I had to go back and back again. Because oh, I was so relaxed. What it's done, it's because uh, I was rushing, because I didn't want to lose too much time. It's actually put a bit of pressure on my breathing as a result. So I was worried that someone would pick it up, you know, and... Anyway, we're back here. The place of healing. No deer today, though. No, it's more... I was doing a really good target with time, you see. Sorry to keep going on about it, but, I, you know, I was relaxed. I knew I had time. It's added 20 minutes to the walk. That could make the difference between missing or catching a train. Believe it or not. Or which bus I get. <sighs> but I, that's what I mean. When I had Alberta, there was no mention of time. I just used to come out, keep an eye. So I'd always get back before dark. And that was all. And I could be out here 7 and 8 o'clock at night. In the summer. Oh, look at those trees. Oh, look at them. Like I said, they're looking, all looking so healthy, aren't they? Rich and healthy. I was, uh, as I was going back to get my stick, there were three blit. They weren't together. It was the tall, thin one. <sighs> he smelt of pot. And then there were two others, but then there was a man and a child. All not connected, I don't think. So, oh, it looks like there's fire going on over there. I'm very wheezy actually after that running. First time I've been wheezy for ages. Alright, if you go up there you can reach a lower hair nap and upper hair nap. That's a, that was a quick route I could have done a shortcut if I'd wanted to earlier coming down here. It's a lot fuller than last time I was here, I must admit. I'll do a little bit of tiptoeing again. Oh, I don't know which way to go. 
Right, I'm just going to turn off a minute. Right, I managed to get across. Feet aren't too bad. I've got another one to do yet. <sighs> Somebody having a bonfire over there. <sighs> and I can hear a dog. If you go up there, that takes you up to Somerton Coombe. This is Hodder's Coombe, which will become Shepherd's Coombe. And then there are walks at the top, Lady's Edge. Uh, this isn't looking so much like a tree graveyard. They have tidied it up a bit. Oh yeah, they have tidied it up a bit. Oh, two people coming. Right, another stream coming up, folks. Some people had their wellies on. See, the thing is, you, if I find it difficult there, I could just drop down onto there. But this isn't anywhere near as full as it can be. This can be massively full. Yeah, I think we can get across here. not anywhere near us. Someone's, looks like someone's put a ridge of stones in there to actually, um, that's it. I got over that one. Feet are a bit wet but they dry out quickly. It's not winter. I've been up here with my girls, Jolene, Georgia and Zara once. We, I took them, I took them on a route was that one or the next one? Uh, yes, yeah, so this one. I took them up uh, what's called Slaughterhouse Coombe. Um, we never called it that. We always called it Over Glen. Never knew it was called Slaughterhouse Coombe back in those days. <laughs> Sounds awful, doesn't it? It's very pretty though, up there. That's the sort of place that you find the deer. Somerton and Frog Coombe and uh, Slaughterhouse Coombe. I actually found a, r a big stag um, savaged. Savaged by something. I don't think the hunts people normally leave them like that so <coughs> they do talk about the, the black beast that lives here. And that's why you've got to be gone before dark. Um. <sighs> hello, hello tree. I do speak to my trees, you know. Anyway, we've done all the streams now. Grass is looking so lush, isn't it? It's, the wood's looking so good. Holford is looking so healthy. <sighs> you really are. I'm so... Happy to see you looking like this. But of course everything looks a bit dead once winter comes. <sighs> yeah, everything does. <sighs> I guess I've got plenty of time to get back. I've just basically... <sighs> I don't know, I might, you know what, I might go down that other route today because I want to catch up on time and not go down Bicknoller Coombe. I'm going to see what I feel like when I get to Bicknoller Post. I might actually go down the way I did a couple m months ago, right over the top um, from Weakham Hill instead of going down Bicknoller Coombe. I haven't decided yet. It all depends on the time. Yeah, I've come down through there before now. Found some small stag horns up there. Sort that like you can make a, a penknife handle out of. 
that's what they do. Some people, they use the horns of uh, the deer. Right then, I've got to stop again, folks. And I don't want to because it's absolutely gorgeous. And I've been come, I've come down here when I had Alberta in the evening when it's the sun starting to go down, and the light images you get off the trees then is fantastic. <sighs> right, trees. Don't worry, I know how to get back over here now. I'll be back.